This is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and welcome to the next video of the 2021 Music Licensing Challenge. In this video, we are going to learn more about how to craft a perfect piece of music for music licensing. By the end of this challenge, you will be able to get your music licensed and be selling it, start making money, getting it placed on TV, uh, video games, movies, wherever you want if you just follow these steps. So to make sure that you don't miss out on anything, be sure to click on the link below and subscribe to the whole challenge. Not only will you be sent cheat sheets, um, you'll be able to get special advice only via email and um, you won't miss a single thing. So you'll be able to follow on exactly. And even if you're watching this after 2021, 20, after the beginning of the new year, it's still really useful just to click down there and follow. This advice is good anytime, but since the new year, it's time to make a new start. So uh, really quickly, where we left off was basically that we had the outline of a song. We had, in the original one, we just had a sketch of an idea. Now we have built it out around um, the different parts. You've got intros, buildups, breakdowns, things like that. Off camera, what I've done between last time and this time is record a live bass, uh, record some percussion and add some transitional elements. Uh, so we're going to go and listen to those. I'm going to talk about what I was thinking, and then we're going to add some more transitional things and make this song have even more forward motion and make it more appropriate for music licensing. But before we listen to the song, let's check out the intro. Okay, so we're about to jump into the song, but if you've got any questions about what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, be sure to leave them below and I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can. I also wanna let you know that if you subscribe to the channel, you'll be sure to see all the subsequent videos. So don't forget to do that. All right, the first thing I want to do is to actually just take a listen to the song so you can get a sense of what's going on here. This is sort of like an upbeat semi-corporate song, but still, um, kind of in the easy listening vibe. Uh, so it's positive, it's upbeat, but not too fast. Let's listen.
there you have it. This is close to the final form of the song, but certainly not what it's going to sound like ultimately. The things I want to talk about here is how we have put all the parts together, what these transitional effects are doing and why they're important. Add some more transitions on some of the MIDI stuff we recorded last time, and also maybe start to do some effects processing on these transitional elements so they sit even better in the mix. So, the first thing we want to talk about is just the transitional elements we added last time, which was to have drum fills. Uh, and using Drummer, it's really easy to plug in in Logic to just <laughs> literally dial in your drum fills so that they're different every time. And then also adjusting the drum beat so that it builds tension and builds energy. So the drums evolve and they have fills that they transition between the sections. Uh, we also added last time these uh, wind chimes that transition with each section. So let's just listen to how there's both a drum fill, like ba da ba ba da da, and, a tran uh, and chimes as it goes out of this. It's subtle, but it lets you know something's happening. In the second half of the song, we also added a tambourine that comes in, which adds more action to the second half of the song, makes it more intense, in addition to the drums playing harder, but it also makes it so that even though the same chords are being played on the back half as the front half, it's not identical. And so for purposes of music licensing, uh, it makes it more useful because now you have kind of almost two versions of the same song. If maybe the producer of a you know TV show needs a less energetic version of this song, well, they can take something from the front half. Maybe they want something more energetic. They can take it from the back half because you got this kind of busy tambourine. And you also have the clapping come in. Let's say nothing's mixed right now, so you know it doesn't sound great. Um, the next thing you've got is the bass, and I recorded this live. I think it's one of the most, if you can play bass live, uh, great. It's one of those instruments that really has an ability to kind of glue things together, and there's lots of little moves on a bass that can make parts just flow together better that are kind of hard to do synthetically, um, but I would recommend taking some time to program bass. So I'm just going to jump around to a few parts and show you how they're different. So. It begins when the bass comes in on the back end with a little bit of a bass fill. Now it's, this is a long low and a slide. Simple but slidey. So that's what it's like initially, the bass line. Then it gets to be a little more bouncy. And you'll see as we get into the chorus, it's gonna have a fill as well. So there you can see there's already in the just the first half of the bass, it starts with a little fill to bring interest that something new is coming in. It first plays something kind of initially slow and simple and slidey, and then it starts playing adding more energy. And then as you go into the next section, there's a bass fill as well. Boom, da, boom. But like it's not overly busy, it's just octaves um, or fifths, and then you get into the chorus which is pretty simple. And then we'll fill out of it. And so now the bass starts in the second half, um, in the second part of the song, playing basically what is playing towards the end of the first verse. Uh, but then it plays it a little louder and with a little more energy. And then we go to something even more energetic even on the second verse here. But it's also kind of like what was, it's the same slide thing as was being played at the very beginning, but now it's being played with eight note, eighth notes. Obviously, we'll have a, fa uh, a fill into the. So there, I didn't fill actually on into the chorus. I just got really louder, which is also good because it signals something's coming. And then we have the ending here with a really long, well-sustained note, so that it's clear.
and having really long clear sustains at the end lets you know like let's just pretend like we're doing a co commercial voiceover and i want to show you why this is important and why all of these elements kind of come together at pfizer we make the best erectile dysfunction medications available see more at your local costco today you know it's like it's that little last thing that they want to say in a commercial that might go over that tail so you want to make sure that you hold your tails um well we're gonna skip over the percussion and the um transition effects for a second and i just want to show you um i think that's probably enough for the soloing for now because everything else i want to add a few more fills on so let's now look at um for the overall way that this song is structured let's close out this bottom section right i mean even just looking even if you don't know what's going on you can see that no section of the song is the same even just if you didn't know what notes are playing so you know just based on where things are located on the grid this song is constantly evolving um but we want to explain why it's evolving. So the first thing we've got here is, um, I've already talked about sort of how the arrangement works with instruments coming in one at a time to add more interest um, and different parts. But now I wanna talk about this like just simple patch here. It's gonna need a much bigger reverb and I'm gonna need to automate how it fades in and out. But I'll turn up the volume and you'll hear kind of how it's not adding more notes, it's not adding another melody, it's just very subtly building a little tension and letting you know that something is coming. Super subtle thing but it just adds a little bit of tension and so now like I'll show you one of the things you can do with this this will probably not be the final version of it but we're gonna automate the volume so that it gets louder over the course of the song or as it kind of builds up um, so We're gonna want it to build up and then quickly kind of fade away. So let's see what this does here. It's just subtly under there, but it's, it hasn't been there before. So that just kind of builds, you know, you're not trying to make the track too complicated in terms of melody or anything that might get in the way or distract from a voiceover. You just want it to be, you know, but you still want it to be interesting and evolving. And that's little subtle pads like this. The next thing we'll sh I want to show you is this like little riser here that I've added. Uh, this needs is going to need a lot of reverb to sit right, and I'll add that now so you can hear. But let's just solo what it's doing. And a lot of these types of sounds, a lot of DAWs come with stock, um, come included. You can look, you know, in something like transition effects or um, atmospheric effects things like that a lot of synth presets include them uh look for things like risers washes whooshes swooshes there's also tons of these that you can just download from sites like loop cloud or splice or something like that and i have an effect like that that i'm also using uh, but these are just some of the presets from logic so let's listen to this builder and then we'll hear it in the context of the mix So that's what it sounds like. Now let's listen to it with the mix. So like it's barely there, but it like is jumping you into the next section. But what I want to do is just add a reverb on it 
to make it um, both a delay and a reverb, actually, to make it just a little bigger. And uh, we'll just do a simple stereo delay. Let's see what this gets us. There was already one, but I think another one is needed to just kind of take away its initial attack, but make it kind of longer and a little more blurred out. And we'll also just do the basic, uh, and we can do a, a space designer maybe. We don't need anything too fancy. Large and bright sounds right as a preset to start with. And that is probably exactly what we're looking for. What I'd like to do with things like this is ultimately to actually bounce them to audio. And we'll do that. I'll show you exactly how you can do that. Actually, I'll hit bounce in place. And the reason I like to do this is so that you can control their tails. So they fade in and fade out exactly where you want them to do it. This is a really important thing to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it here. And now let's listen to this. And so we need it to fade out a little faster. So I'm just gonna drag the fade out tool here and make it so that it comes in and then drops out really quick. And let's listen one more time with the volume up a little bit. And so that way it doesn't really get in the way of the chorus. I could actually add, it goes to another delay and reverb. Um, and what I might actually do is boost these up so that the fade out has a little more room to play. Okay, that's great. And well, it happens in two other places of the song, so I'll have to go and do it there as well. Um, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that, but just know that everywhere you do it, um, that's another way of controlling these tails. Now you don't, we've, you know, we can delete this original channel if we want or just mute it um, now that we've got it bounced. We also are gonna have a two down risers here. So the first one, as you come out of the chorus, right, this is signaling, again, a transition has happened. That was so subtle you might have missed it. First, there was the bell tree that we added previously, but this is sort of like a... And it just is right under there. Super subtle, but it does welcome you back down to this next section. We've also added a white noise downlifter on top of that, which is just doing the same thing. Let's listen to that again. Uh, and so, you know, combined together, it lets you know, hey, we're starting, starting afresh and that the tone is a little bit lower now. So the next thing we're gonna do is, I mean, I'm not gonna talk about the percussion. I added a little bit of just bongo and kibasa to liven things up. Um, they're not doing anything too special. One thing I will say is I did add an ending, uh, like tambourine, just to give the ending even more just character, which you can hear here. Just, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of something there at the end. So now what I want to talk about is adding fills to some of these other parts, uh, specifically on the piano and on the marimba, because right now they're just loops that are playing over and over again. But as we, so. So we've got these, uh, 
parts here on the uh, on the way to the chorus, uh, and we want probably to signal that something's happening here with the melody as well. This has already been repeated once, so let's try making these shorter. And one thing we could do is just you know go bam 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 or bam 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 bump, or we could try something melodically more complex. So let's see about this, and I'll turn off the whirly because they're playing the same thing. Oops, sorry about that. Oops, a daisy. Um, okay, so that was fine, but nothing special. So let's. Um, Let's try something a little different. Yeah, I like that. So, and we'll just make these longer. Another thing I want to do is make it so that there's sort of a velocity build, so it's, you know, gets louder over it. And now let's just copy this. Bring in the whirly again. Paste it. And so now. And it seems like it has to resolve here. And this is the note it should resolve on, but. Um, Here I might bring it down an octave. And I might even bring the piano in to play a unison part there because it's been playing something quite different through most of the track, but I could see bringing them together here would also further signify that something is about to happen. And let's actually, here let's try doubling it up. That'll work, I guess, but let's hit it harder on the piano to actually Okay, so now I can copy all three of these. Oops, well, we gotta go to the section now where this happens later in the song. Oops, it is. And copy this over. And next, we're going to have just the regular piano, which repeats over and over again. So I want to maybe add one fill in the middle here just to mix things up a little bit. make this last chord hit on the downbeat here. Oops, sorry. Um, and we'll just have it hit over here on the downbeat and sustain. And so that other fill that's going on, the riff, uh, not really a fill, just the other lead can punch through here without being constantly 
overwhelmed. And what we need to do is uh, increase the velocity here. So just, it punches a little harder. And actually on all of these, probably we wanna select this first batch, this first chord here, make it a little quieter. And this third one here, a little bit louder. So we're crescendoing into this. And maybe we'll add one, um, we'll just select the razor tool and just cut all these guys right here. Come on now. Okay, so now that should just add a little more. And this one can be quieter. Cool. And now we'll, again, just bring this guy over here so that there's a little more variation. As you see, I'm just trying to make it so that everything can shine a little bit. It's not overly busy. Um, and that the song is always evolving. So we've got this organ part now playing four times in a row. So let's just listen. And so um, what we can do here, for example, is we could take this one and bring it down maybe. So it, and I could add little fills or something on top of this, but I'm not trying to make it busy. I think this is just, just enough that, you know, although maybe we want to Maybe coming from the E is better. And we'll turn the velocity of this guy down. And here, I'm not actually going to do that fill. Um, have any fill because, as we already discussed, there is a fill that exists so um, that we put in just now. Um, so let's see if we can just get away with holding it and not have that fill be too busy. Oops. And that works for me. I think that, you know, sounds pretty darn good. With the ending here, I don't think we really need to change it much, uh, the fill much, because we only play the chorus a couple of times. But what I do want to do, I'm not going to change the melody, but at the very end of the song, at the crescendo, I am A, going to just increase the velocity significantly at this last few notes, but also just on the entire final phrase so that the um, it just hits a little harder than the previous one and adds just a little more weight and these final few notes we want to hit harder and I'm going to double them up an octave higher so that just you know something's coming you, you hear how that just Let's you know the ending's there, uh, but we probably don't, since it's an octave, maybe it's already too loud. Yeah, so I will actually not turn that final phrase up as much because I doubled the amount of notes. Oops, let's also make sure that we have an octave here on this final hit instead of just a single note because otherwise it'll sound just thin. And we can really just copy and paste 
this on down because they're doubled. Um, similarly on the piano here, we can just take this last section increase the overall velocity by a few and then kind of crescendo this a little bit and then we can also just bring a octave along the top here And maybe, maybe we actually want to double these up. That was, I'm sorry for putting you through that sound effect. Let's see now. Yeah, I think something like that. And then on this chord here, this ending chord, I think let's actually bring the F to the top. Probably like that. Or maybe we can even bring the G up. Why is there even an F there? That should be a C. That's a better resolution, I think. One more time, let's just listen to how the last very ending goes. There you have it. You know the ending is coming because it just tells you that in so many different ways. It's a little bit louder, goes up in pitch, the volume changes, but it's the same melody, it's the same song. And this is where, you know, the, this is what separates the art of stock music from just regular music. You've got to tell the story with a lot of detail, but the parts are simple. Your canvas is simple, but what you do with it is complex. Uh, I hope this has been really helpful. Be sure to sign up for that free challenge down below because you will get you know, access to all sorts of additional resources uh, that will help you, cheat sheets and things like that, to get you making your music, to get you start licensing music in this year, and to start earning something from your music. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, and that we're going to cover mixing stock music and how it's a little bit different than just mixing regular music and i'll give you some tips and tricks for that as well thank you so much for watching and let me know if you've got any questions or comments down below thanks